The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. So this week, I turned the TV on for a little bit and I was browsing the Disney Channel. And at one point, I just saw a glimpse of Grumpy. You been grumpy lately? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of sad sometimes. These are crazy world, crazy time we're living in. Stressed, depressed. So I'm preparing for this gospel, and frankly, when I first read the gospel, it seems like Jesus is a little grumpy. Right? This Canaanite woman says, "Have pity on me, Lord, son of David." And his reply is, "I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel." And then she says, Lord, help me. His reply is, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. And I was like, wow, Jesus is having a bad day. He seems to dismiss her. You know, Jesus is fully human. He has every emotion that we have. He had to have some bad days. And especially if you read the verses before this gospel, it's somewhat understanding why Jesus may be a little grumpy. You know, the verses before this gospel, he's in a little bit of a heated, I would guess, discussion with the Pharisees and scribes, focusing, they are focusing on the tradition of the elders. And he gets to the point in that discussion where he says to them, he quotes Isaiah and he says, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And he leaves them, as we hear in this gospel today, and goes to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Now, there will be no Pharisees in in that region, or scribes. That is enemy territory. That is a land of pagan country. But even in a foreign country, I'm sure Jesus' name was circulating. People were hearing about this man. So is Jesus being harsh? Or is he teaching us, teaching his disciples at the time a very important lesson? You know, I know that I've made some people grumpy in my life because I've sent, you know, you hit the send button sometimes when you create a text or or email or a tweet. And it can occur easily that it's misunderstood taken the wrong way, like Facebook, right? It's like You want to get it back, right? Because the written word does not include inflections in our voice. It doesn't include facial expressions. And so the other day, I'm thinking about all of this this week, and I walk into my office, and this man is smiling at me. He's been on my wall for a long time, but he's smiling at me in my office. And I thought, 
That's the Jesus who was talking to the Canaanite woman. He wasn't grumpy. So let's listen to the gospel with that Jesus. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, have pity on me, Lord, son of David. So this woman, she does not have the law or the prophets, but she recognizes Jesus' lineage and she calls him out in front of everyone, son of David, Lord, she calls him. And then she continues, my daughter is tormented by a demon. Jesus does not reply to her. Jesus did not say any, a word in answer to her, the scriptures said. And then the disciples come to him and they say, send her away for she keeps calling out after us. So she is not doing this one time. She's calling from a distance, asking, pleading for help. And after this guy saw me in my office, I see him now with a grin on his face, with love on his face, saying to her, but also to his disciples, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what his disciples believed. He was their savior. So he's probably saying that to her, but to them. Isn't that right, my disciples? And then the woman does him homage. So now she's come to him. And she says, Lord, help me. And he says in reply, perhaps with that same expression, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. That, if said in a serious tone, is a huge insult to her and the Canaanite people because they were referred to as dogs by the people that Jesus lived with, that culture. But if you say that with a smile on your face to her and looking at your disciples, it takes a little bit different meaning. Now the disciples are kind of questioning what's going on. And she replies with a quick wit, maybe spilled with the spirit, when she says, please Lord, for even the dogs, some translations say that at that point she said puppies, Please, Lord, for even the puppies eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. She's showing that she wants him. She wants any food, spiritual, that she can get, any scraps. She's a puppy. She's young in the faith. She's learning, and she believes in him. And he says, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter is healed from that hour. Jesus is showing his disciples that the old era is moving away, that the kingdom is available to anyone who has faith in him throughout the world. And that his disciples will have to open their minds and put aside their anti-pagan grumpiness and those attitudes that were so prevalent in that people, in Jesus' people at the time. You know, grumpiness seems to be all around us. Today, with all the, you turn the news on, and you hear all these inflections and facial expressions and volumes of grumpiness. And you have to wonder, I've heard many people say, what is the truth? What is it? There is one channel that broadcasts the truth 24 hours a day, one station, one frequency, truthful all the time, that is a cure for grumpiness. It is the Jesus channel. You need to tie in spiritually into the Jesus channel, into that frequency daily. How can we be healed from the discomfort that makes you grumpy? Perhaps you suffer from political discomfort. You know, Father Brian this past week said to me, it's not about the elephant. It's not about the donkey. It's about the lamb. Get your little fix in the morning of the elephant and the donkey 
and put it away and focus throughout your day on the land. It's, you know, some of us are dealing with physical discomfort, challenges and worries, our temperature, the statistics that I read this morning, whatever the case may be. Get that fix a little bit, but the rest of your day, focus on the one who heals us spiritually. And those of us who are dealing with economic discomfort, loss of a job, can't pay the bills, my stocks, when am I going to retire? Yeah, you need to keep up with that. But don't be consumed by it. Focus on that gift given to all of us, which has no price given to us freely. Jesus, an everlasting life. What an awesome gift. Handle what you can throughout your day. Yes, we must do that. But don't forget to give the rest to God. He can handle it all. Strive for a better relationship with Christ every day. Partake in the sacraments regularly as much as you can. Give to God what you cannot handle. Talk to God throughout your day. Pray. A few dedicated prayers throughout your day can help keep the grumpies awake.